It's been a long time, hasn't it? I think it's been roughly two months or just over two months since our last review. But if any of those out there are still with us, thanks for, for uh, waiting for us to come back. And welcome back to our first episode of 2020 of Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. Now, I do apologise if I sound a little bit more disgusting and look a bit more disgusting than usual. But I am currently getting over man flu, which is another reason why this review has taken a long time to get out. That and the fact that in the UK, if you've been having a look, the weather has been absolutely atrocious for probably around a month and a half now so that's that's what I'm putting the excuses on anyway not for me being lazy or <coughs> anything like that but the gun we're going to look at today is the Artemis M22 now I've been wanting to do this one for a while now because Artemis and SMK and some of the budget guns in general what I love about them is that they seem to be updating their guns as time goes on you'll see some of the higher brands or bigger brands out there they tend to not let their guns stagnate but they seem to keep them the same for years and years and years whereas these have been updated now we do actually have to prove just how much this has changed we have a mark 1 m22 with us which we're going to compare this to have a little look at it not waste too much time on it but have a little look at it so you can see the improvements that have been made the other reason why i want to look at this is because it was actually the Mark I version of this was my first ever PCP rifle. Um, I'll warn you, not everyone's going to love the look of the thing, but I am quite attached to it, so please be gentle about the rifle in the comments. Um, on top of that, everyone can see the Nova Vista Alphas have taken off like crazy. People absolutely love them. Whereas the poor old M22 and M M11, sorry, the sister rifle to this, have sort of been sitting in their shadow for a bit and I don't know why. So I'm going to do a little video on this as we usually do and we're going to look at the features, talk about the handling, test the shot count, do accuracy testing as per always, but we're going to uh, do a little um, say present versus past on this as well so we can compare the two and see how things have changed so thanks ever so much for waiting for us if you have done if you've left the or unsubscribed the channel i honestly don't blame you i probably would have done it too so let's move on to features and compare both rifles and see what's been updated and what's been changed Okay then, so features and comparison. You can already see, uh, well, basically how the new model has been refined quite a bit compared to the older rifle. Now what I will say is the older rifle here, this was not actually my Mark I M22. Like an idiot, I traded that in and pretty much regretted it ever since. This one has actually been traded in with us. And you can see there, the previous owner has actually given it a lovely uh, oil job on the stock there. And you can see the grain is coming through beautifully. What I will say, about these is that uh, the Mark 1 M22, when it was out the box, I think most of them, or most uh, people who have owned these will agree with me, they did not have lovely grain um, on the stock. They was in fact, uh, you can sort of see it now a dear little bit, they was bright orange and well, just almost like someone had orange paint on a paintbrush and just slapped it on there. And that was pretty much it. They wasn't the most eye-catching stocks or rifles to be fair in the world. But let's talk about the uh, the features of the gun now. Now we've sort of got that little modification out the way and there's a few little other bits as well. Like you can see here, there's a bipod sitting on the front here, um, which trust me, you will need. We'll talk about that when we get to the um, uh, handling section of this review and the weight. Uh, and there's also, you can see there's a, uh, a barrel band and accessory rail that has been put on there, which again goes to show, we talk about this quite a lot in our, our Artemis reviews, but you really can get quite a lot of aftermarket parts for these guns. And it's, it's great. I love seeing the community coming up with these weird and wonderful adapters and things like that to really breathe extra life into the rifles but features we will start off at the rear and you can see here the new m22 comes with an updated uh, ventilated recoil pad there which just looks a little bit more flash compared to the older more plain recoil pad the stock itself as we've already mentioned you see here the cheek piece to be fair might actually be a bit more pronounced on the older model but the grain and such is that little bit nicer and the finish is just that much better on the new model compared to the older rifle moving slightly further along you've got the there's a slightly deeper pattern on the checkering compared to the older model hopefully you can see that there and moving further forwards this is where things really do begin to change because 
The triggers and such, you can see these are actually identical. They are quite a nice two-stage adjustable unit, but we'll talk a bit more about that as we move on to the review. And the bolts are the same setup as what you'll find on the sister rifle, the M11. In fact, the action is pretty much identical to the M11. The main differences are up front, but the bolts are also, as I said with the M11 review, they're so smooth, I originally thought they was broken. I would happily put an M22 or M11 up against any brand new rifle, no matter the price on the market today and I would still have very good odds that the M these M's what you can see here and the M11 will probably still be smoother that is just how silky smooth they are moving further along you can see the rifles come with single shot trays and you also get the Artemis multi-shot mag to come with it now most people if you've seen the M16 review you'll know how you load these but we will go into this a little bit just to be sure for those that are new and interested into maybe looking at an M22 or maybe even an older model that you've seen on the market somewhere um, sadly you won't be looking at them on free ads from now on but uh, we won't go into that now things where, to be, th where things begin to change with the old model and the new model is you can see here the four stock designs are vastly different. The older model, I quite liked it. I mean people was put off by it, they said it looked maybe a little bit cheap, a little bit basic, but you've sort of got the groove you can see here for your hands and your fingertips just to rest into when you're shouldering the rifle, like with your leading hand and such. I quite like that because the guns they're chunky guns. Um, I think I may have used this before, but I'm going to use it again. If you remember what Boris the Blade said about the revolver in Snatch, it applies to these. It's, I say they're one of the only guns you can use as not only a rifle, but also as a post jammer because they're that solid, they won't break. Um, but the new one, they've refined it even further. And you see here, you've got another nice little bit of checkering on the uh, four stock here. And the stock itself, you can see as it sort of uh, tails off at the end, has just got a, quite a bit more shape to it compared to the old model, which just sort of stops. Now, where it's different to the M11, is the M11 came with a, you see the standard barrel poking through and a silencer sticking out the end. With this, however, the M22 has a baffled shroud. Now, we'll do the decibel test at the end just to see how loud they are, but I'll say just out of my experience, the M22 is comfortably quieter than the M11 with the silencer plumbed in. But again, we'll do some testing on that, and if we get an M20, M11 sorry, in soon, we'll uh, get that decibel tested again just so we can compare. But the M22 is one of the quietest out-of-the-box rifles that I've shot, I'll put it that way. But moving slightly further on, back in here, just back down here, you've also got a regulator with the M22, so it'll be very interesting when we do our shot count testing and consistency testing to see what the rifle can do. And moving slightly further along, you can see here, this is again, oh, I'm going to move a bit. See again, you've got the air pressure gauges, which are, you know, right where you want them. Right where you've got to look straight down the barrel to see how much air you've got in your gun. I don't know why they keep doing that. It aggravates the hell out of me, but it's the way things are. However, the difference, and again, where this new rifle has been refined even further, and the tinkerers will love this, is if I can get enough angle on there for you, I don't think I can. Just under there, there is also a regulator pressure gauge, which the older model does not have. So they've made improvements and quality of life changes with the rifles, and again, just the stock itself. They've listened to the feedback from the guys saying, yeah, shoot straight, it's built like, I'm not allowed to say what it's built like, a brick, but I'll let you come up with the rest. But at the same time, that stock is just not enough. Well, the new one it might not still be to everybody's tastes. I don't know. But I think that is actually quite a flash looking rifle. I had a customer come to me who actually looked at one and said that it's basically, it looked like, <laughs> no one's going to believe this, I know, but an S410 steroided up older brother. Uh, I think that's a compliment. I'm not sure, but <laughs> I'll, t I'll take it and I'll put it out there. I don't know if you guys, what you think, guys and girls, what you think of that. But that's it for the M22s uh, when it comes to features and looks. Oh, and one last thing, I forgot it because I didn't want to think about it. It's got the stupid trigger blade mounted safety, which is stupid, as I've already said. So that's it for features. Let's move on now to weight because this is the bit that's going to put pe people quite uh, or quite a few people shall we say off of the m22 so let's get it weighed and see what she comes out at okay then so this is the weight unscoped and i'm actually genuinely surprised she only comes out at 7.7 .7 pounds so either this cold has made me weaker or i don't know maybe it's the only rifle on the planet that's balanced in a way that makes it feel twice as heavy as what it should be but 
it is what it is she's 7.7 pounds and here you go hopefully there you can get a better shot there of the regulator pressure gauge there underneath again as mentioned absent on the older rifle but yep light's gone out but she comes out at 7.7 pounds now bear in mind that is also without a scope so she's only going to get heavier you're probably scoped up depending on what you have you're going to be looking at around nine pounds so she's creeping up then but again to put it into perspective that's the weight i think of uh, that was our era cobra wasn't it without a scope so she's genuinely genuinely not too bad and it's definitely a full-size rifle as well make no mistakes about that this would eat probably an s510 let alone an s410 so that's it for weighing let's move on to the mags and we'll do this a little bit quicker this time because you know we've uh, had our fair share of artemis mags but for those new to the channel let's load them up and um, let's see how they work Okay, we're sidestepping away from loading the mag just at the moment. Now, I know you're all at the edge of your seat. You can't wait to see me load yet another Artemis mag that we've covered, what, three, four times now? Uh, but uh, on the topic of updating rifles with time, we've just received the new PR900s in, and we know these are proven to be quite popular with the shooters out there because of just what they can do and at the price. And we're glad to say the baffled shroud, which we all know wasn't the best, we'll put it that way, has been replaced with a threaded barrel and a silencer which as we said threaded barrel a so that therefore it means a proper removable silencer now it seems to be the same setup as what you get on the cp2 but i'm very pleased to report that it is much better than what we had on the earlier prs these are genuinely very quiet now um, to me it sounds like you don't get the bark like what you had before it's more of a a clink if that makes sense. <laughs> I know I sound like I've lost it, but that, that's the only way I can describe it. They make a clink. Um, but on top of that, they've also changed the bolt handle. As you can see there, they've given it sort of a, a more stretched out and squared off sort of look to it, which I'm very appreciative of. As someone with bigger hands, that comes to my fingers much better than what the older one did. On top of that, maybe it's just RPRs. I don't know. If, if any other RFDs are watching this, hopefully you guys have got them as well. But the stocks on them are way nicer now. Look at the grain on that. I hope the camera's picking it up okay because the light's shining directly behind me and it's my screen's black, so hopefully you can see that. But the, the actual grain on these new PRs is beautiful. I don't know if they're doing the Remington trick or what's happening, but well played to you guys at uh, SMK or where these are made. Fantastic stuff. Anyways, that's, uh, that's enough of our uh, little sidestep, our little segment that we've done here. Let's get back to loading the mag. But uh, yeah, thought I'd keep you guys updated. Okay, so back to our regular programming. We're gonna take a look at how you load these mags. Now, these are gonna look very, very familiar to you if you've seen some of our other reviews, as mentioned, like the M16s and the M11, which we've done um, a little bit, well, a good few months before we've uh, done this review, or potentially even over a year, I believe, at this point. Now, the good news is these are actually a very, very good mag, but they can be fiddly, which is why I'm always happy to get this done, just so you can have a quick look as to how you load them. Now, dropping the pellets in is pretty simple. You haven't got to spin the mag and load them from from the rear like some of the, a lot of the other mags out there it's simply a job of plopping them in through the top now the thing that you are going to want to have is something i like an allen key or you can make your own little tool um, i've had to grab this quick um, but an allen key or something or even just another pellet is because what you'll need to do is just poke these pellets down just seat them just that little bit like that so they cycle correctly because what can happen if you have a look there's like a very fine little tooth hopefully the camera will focus a bit better so there's a little tooth here and what can happen is the skirt can actually wedge up against that and there's also a little point you can see just here poking through and the skirt of the pellet as if it would do it with this yeah it's stopping there it catches against that part of the mag and when you've got that in your gun that could cause the mag to jam up and do all sorts of uh, nasty things which you don't particularly want to happen but as long as you just make sure you seat them properly like this and spin them all the way around so you're done. I'm sorry, I'm a bit fingers and thumbs at the moment because I'm sort of looking through the camera to do this and it's quite awkward. Um, yeah, if you simply seat them, again, something pointy like this, seat them in the mag and uh, you'll be absolutely golden. No jams, no nothing. So that's the Artemis mag. Let's see how she handles when she's put to the shoulder. So let's move on to handling. Okay then, so handling, what do we think of the behemoth that is the uh, Artemis M22? Well, first thing I want to talk about is we're going to go back to the mag, just real quick. The reason behind that is because there's a clever design with a lot of the Artemis mags, especially if you go for the, uh, the M series unit, shall we say, or the same as what you'll see on the P10. And that is simply that they come with a magnet 
at the bottom of the uh, mag itself and obviously there's another one in the, um, the base of the action or the breech area here and why that's handy is because it makes loading this thing of a night time so much easier you all have all you have to do is simply roughly line it up and the mag will pretty much just suck itself as you might have seen there that last little it'll suck itself straight into where it should be and it lines itself up beautifully and again nice little feature if you're shooting over night time and even daytime we know there's a few pcps out there we've reviewed some that have got slightly fiddly mags to load in anyway um, on that sort of subject the loading subject you might have just seen then i have to say the whole gun is chunky which is what i love about this but just look at that bolt on there I think that has to be one of the biggest bolts that I've ever seen. And I apologise if this comes across slightly sexist perhaps, but I don't care, I'm going to say it. This is a man's gun through and through. Sure, if you're a lady, I'm sure you can shoot this as well. But the way this thing has been designed, it's almost like what I think I said, uh, I might have said this earlier. It not only shoots things, but you could drive fence posts in with it as well. It feels like it is never going to break. You could build a bridge out of M22s and it would outlast all of us. It's a genuinely lovely and solid feeling gun. I mean, look at the size of the block, what you can see there. It's just enormous. <laughs> this is a gun that was designed for me. Um, but no, th that could be why I love it so much, to be fair. But at the same time, we have to be as unbiased as possible. Um, there are things that I don't like about this gun, um, which we're going to move on to now. The bolt, as we said, lovely, smooth, beautiful to use. What isn't lovely is the safety, which I'm sure you can see now. They've put the safety in the trigger unit itself. As you can see that little button is pushing it like that. Um, this is stupid for multiple reasons, um, which I'm sure you can understand. It's a bit like having, I think I might have used this analogy before, but damn it, I'm using it again. It's a bit like having a car and having the accelerator pedal and having the brake set inside the accelerator pedal. Can you see the problem? <laughs> it's sort of like, yeah, to make your gun safe, simply touch the bit that makes it dangerous. It doesn't make sense. If they could have just put the same unit, the safety anyway, not necessarily the trigger, but if they could put the same unit as what was on the Remington Air Cobra, that little toggle that just sits right in front of that trigger blade there, nice little manual toggle, it's all that you need, it's safe, it's dependable, your fingers away from the trigger, or even a bit like what the, um, the uh, Alpha, what that had, just a system on the right hand side that you can just flick on and off. It's better, and look, it's not just Artemis that I'm picking on here, and I would never usually pick on an Air Arms, they're lovely guns. But let's be fair, anyone out there with an Air Arms S410, take a look at where your safety is as well. <laughs> a few people do it, I don't know why, it's daft. But anyways, that's enough of that, let's move on to the trigger. Now the trigger is another little thing that I'm also a little bit angry about, and the reason behind that is if you look, there are no holes to, address, to adjust this trigger. Um, it is adjustable, but it's a stock off job and you have to sort of take a plate off the side of the action where you can get then to your adjustment screws inside the gun itself. Does it, can you make a, a fair bit of difference to the trigger adjusting it with the system this has? Oh bloody hell, yes you can. But at the same time, you've made it as awkward as possible for us. Uh, some people, they want to take it to the range and adjust it without having to take their gun apart each time. This is something that the, um, the M16 was originally like this, so fingers crossed maybe they'll change the trigger unit with this slightly so it's a bit easier to use. But it's, it's a nightmare. Um, just, just do it so as we can adjust it without taking the bloody gun apart, please. But speaking about the trigger, this is where things might get a little bit more positive, especially when we compare it to, as we said, I'm going to be putting this directly up against the Nova Vista Alpha, because the trigger unit on this, unlike the Alpha, doesn't feel like it's been made from McDonald's Happy Meal toy plastic. In fact, there's the second stage there. There's a bit of creep. You might have seen that. Hang on, let's just cycle it again. And if you can see here, if I can get it a bit closer for you, point it in safe direction, you got second stage, and there's three bits of creep. You got creep, 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 off she goes. With adjustment, you can tune that out. This is simply in its factory setting. I have not tampered with this in any way, shape, or form. And to give it credit, it is at least predictable three stage creep. I know that sounds like advertising jargon, doesn't it? But I'll just show you. So, second stage, creep, creep creep off it goes so it is at least it's not going to catch you out one of these times when you're at hunting you're not going to accidentally wound your target because obviously that's the last thing that we want but there is a little bit of creep as we said that can be tuned out if i had to compare this to the alpha's trigger which you're going to be doing that a lot in this video i hate to say it comparing it to the alpha 
it's a better unit than what the Alpha's got. It's a much better unit than what the Remington Air Cobra's got. Until you put a Welsh Woolly Trigger unit on there, then it gets very frighteningly close. Um, in fact, I might even give it to the Welsh Woolly Trigger unit, for being honest. But it's a good unit it's not the best it's not as crisp as an artemis m16 they are a genuinely lovely trigger unit what you got on there but it gets the job done it's fairly light it's there's a little bit of travel like you saw there did a little bit of creep but again with adjustment you'll tune that straight out i'm sure and it's it's good it is quite nice it's dependable this is the bit that is going to put a lot of people off though and i'm sure you know this is what's coming we got to talk about how it feels in the shoulder and the weight and such now why i was quite surprised by the how light this actually came out on the scales is because when you don't have the scope on this the weight and it makes sense the weight is quite far forwards on this gun a scope does bring it back quite a bit and it's actually it's quite bearable now I mean, if we try and find the balance point if you can just about see that it's a little bit far forwards it's about going up here where my thumb is now if you don't have a scope on there it's even slightly further forwards than that and I think that is what when you shoulder them they do have that little bit of extra poundage in your leading hand but in general it's actually with the scope on there it's quite nice you don't forget that it's a big gun i'll put it that way it's not going to make you think you're shouldering a bsa ultra all of a sudden but it is quite lovely to um shoulder but again the weight being further forwards is not much of a surprise when you just simply look at how little you have back here and just how much you have going far forwards here but it's quite nice to shoulder i mean the cheek piece for my big head is pretty much fantastic it's maybe not quite as tall as what you get on the m16 or it doesn't quite feel that way to me but it's really not far behind and the gun in general as a package i'll just put it this way if you like a gun with a bit of weight to it like myself you're going to fall in love with the m22 i'll put it here and now the alpha will definitely be more your gun if you want something that's still very much a a semi-brutish looking thing but it'll be more your type of gun if you want something that's maybe a little bit more manageable don't get me wrong it's every bit as long as this but in the synthetic stock especially it's shockingly light despite what you might think this is the heifer lump of the family and i love it because of it but again this is me this is my personal taste and again as we said if you want to light a gun don't even look at this it's not going to be it but overall handling wise i'm genuinely very impressed the trigger's pretty nice the overall the way the thing shoulders is good i know it's not handling but i and it's obviously this is purely subjective but i love the way the thing looks so i've got to say it and when it comes to muzzle report like what hopefully you might have heard then it's really rather quiet hang on i'll shut up so you can hear it and bearing in mind that's inside an echoey barn whereas the alpha when we tested it was outside in the field so it's going to be a hell of a lot more quiet but overall, handling-wise, I am pretty damn impressed. But it can handle like a Ferrari, but it doesn't matter if it's about as con bloody consistent as a politician. So let's get the chronograph out, and let's put a few shots through this, and let's look for power, consistency, and shot count. Let's see what the M22 can do. Let's move on. Right then, so chronograph time. I do apologise if you can hear an aeroplane flying over. It's been a lovely day today, so we've had quite a few of them. Um, but uh, hopefully the pearl mics will block some of that out. On the left, we have the rifle prepped and ready. We're going to be using the single shot tray simply because it's quicker and easier to use for this particular type of test. Pellets on trial will be the 8.3 grain RWS Superdome pellets, um, mainly because the weight of them puts some smack bang, uh, smack bang sorry, in the center of a lot of the other pellets that are popular on the market today. And they are a ridiculously consistent pellet with what testing we've done with them. You can see the chronograph set up and you can see on the phone here, look, we're starting with an error message, if you can read that, which is a very good sign. Um, we've got the chrono set up and you'll see live results as to what the gun's doing as each time we fire, it should be updated on the phone screen here and converted into feet, pounds of energy. And you'll see the, hopefully the averages and the consistency and things like that. So um, we're going to put the M22 through its paces now and see what the rifle can do. So let's uh, shut our trap and um, get to shooting.
So then, chronograph results. How did the M22 do? Well, I think uh, we well, can colour me impressed. I'll put it that way. Roughly 162 full power shots, I believe, until the power started dropping off. And even then, when it did drop off, we just skip it on just so we can have a quick recap. Yeah, 162, you can see where she starts, then casually coming down. But then talking about drop off, look how smooth this actually is. So you got 162 here, if you can see that, it drops to 1059 from pretty much a flat 107. I mean, look, 1076, 107, 107, 1076, 107. Then after that, it starts gently coming down 1059, 1065, 1054, 1059, sorry, 1054, 1062. And even then, it did not want to give up. It was fighting for air. But even then, look, 10.04, 10.04, 10.04, 10.04, until she finally starts dropping sub 10, which, as with this channel, as we usually like to do, when she drops below 10, we stop, because it's never coming back up from there. Now, it doesn't quite have the overall lungs of what the Alpha had that we tested, but there's something you need to bear in mind. Number one of which, the Alpha was a 2.2. This is a 177, so she's going to be a bit more of an air hog in comparison. The other thing to bear in mind is that the Alpha, while it had a lot of shots, consistency wasn't really its strongest suit. If you look at it, it sort of starts high, like 11.4, 11.5 or something like that. Then after that, it just gently bled off throughout the entirety of the, um, the, the string. With this, we just go back to where she's running real sweet. You can see here, it's pretty much flat all the way through. Now, we did have a spread of 14 FPS, which I was thinking, dear God, if you can hold that on for a gun with the regulators not even bedded in, you can hold on to that for this entire string. I'm going to be, I'm keeping it, I'll put it that way. Um, we couldn't quite manage that. We had one shot that took it over to 11.1. .1. Now, again, it could be that it was a freakishly light pellet, or it could also be that the regulator may have just had that one little spike. Like I said, this gun is not running in the slightest. It might have had that one little spike, and then after that, it settled back down again. Now, either way, I'm going to say this. Uh, you may disagree. You're more than welcome to. You probably or may know more about this than what I do. But I would be quite confident that when you do some pellet testing with this and you let this gun run itself in even more, get itself nice and tight, I reckon you'll be getting 10 FPS spread throughout the entirety of the shot string or even less, maybe even single digit which is a hell of a thing to say for a gun that you can find advertised for easily sub 400 quid. I'll put it that way. I mean, 350 is what we ask for these. And what a gun for the money. <laughs> but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because we're saying this, but it might group like an absolute shotgun. So I don't want to, uh, I'm not kissing its ass too much at the moment. I'll put it that way. Now, thankfully for us, somebody's left me with all of these tins of pellets to try we've got wasps don't laugh they're actually not bad wasps pro shot precision micro match that moves up a bit to the remington tyrant hammers smk blacks victory shocks acupel super dome rifle field uh, domes then we've got the Barrack good old HN Remington Barracudas. These in the unmarked tin or tub are the QYS pellets. Slightly further along, we've got some FTTs, we've got some Air Arms Diablos, JSB Exact Express, and some Rifle Field Super Magnums. Now, I think it'd be impolite if we didn't put a few of these through this rifle and see which one it grew best with, and just so as we could see how pellet fussy the rifle may or may not be. Now you can see here we've got some cleansers off at the side as well, because I know a lot of you guys have been requesting in our older videos, um, make sure to shoot the barrel through or clean the barrel out just a little bit before you test the next tin. So for this one, we're going to get that done. Um, we're going to load the single shot tray in, have a few shots and see which pellet it likes the most. Now we're going to be doing this off camera because otherwise our videos go on for too long anyway. Um, you're usually a year older by the time they're over. So we're going to do this off camera and I'll show you the results of my testing and then we'll fill some... So, uh, I'll say right in a minute, we'll film some groups when we're done and see just which, which pellet the rifle likes the most and just see how accurate it can truly be with it. So let's get the testing and I'll report back in two ticks. Okay then, so accuracy test results. You can see we've got our full spread in front of us now. And let's just say there was a few surprises in with this. Now, one thing I will say is you'll notice that a couple of the cards have got two groups on them. The reason behind that is, although it's not much calmer today, when we first started film... <laughs> Do you get my point? <laughs> Thank you, God. That was timed perfectly. There you go. You can't doubt me now. There's no string here, I promise you. Um, yeah, when we first started filming, the wind was really bad. Um, you'll see the super domes. There's two groups on there simply because it wasn't fair judging it on the first group we did. Um, but yeah, 
uh, as I said, we had a few surprises. Now, don't look. Oh. Well, that was the FTTs. <laughs> the FTTs look like this. Uh, not five pence, not 20 pence. Not the best. So do you know what? If that wants to stay down there, it can stay. Moving slightly further along, we'll start back here with the SMK Blacks. Now, the SMK Blacks weren't too bad. If you look, I mean, you've got about three or four stacking just here, and you've got one off to the right, and one left, and one slightly high. So it's not the ideal pellet for the gun, but you could have some fun plinking with it. And again, to be fair, with these pellets, what we shot here, we didn't really run the barrel into them, so to speak. We simply cleaned it, and then retested sort of thing and the reason behind that is it's taking long enough to get this review out here and if we properly leaded it in and then waited for the next few good days which is not going to be this week i'll put it that way um this is going to take even longer to get out so unfortunately this is the best we can do but not too bad we then tried the pro shot precision match pellets which i think precision is probably the wrong word the super domes now here you'll see this is the first group that we did if we just put five pps down there I mean, the main cluster is more or less under the 5P, but you got one just down and right and one off to the left. However, we've just retested again, and we managed this. That is absolutely under a 5 pence piece. So these, I don't know, these might be taken into consideration for the main test. We'll see how we get on with the rest of them. Now we've got the Air Arms Diablo Fields, and it's a similar story with the JSBs. We had the first group here when we had the windy weather, which it's not pretty um, you can almost get it under five pence piece and then the second group I thought let it let in a little bit more then have a bit more fun with it see if we can do any better and oh winds blowing now which one's gonna blow off next and it almost fits under the five pence piece but it's still not the best further on we had the Barracudas these were prettier than the FTTs but not by much it just fits under a five pence piece which again isn't bad in fact when you say under five pp so that's usually pretty good but that's 25 yards remember not the standard 35 what we've been doing lately and what we did i believe with the alpha next up rifle field super magnum now these again they were actually pretty good if we move this over here you'll see main cluster is comfortably under the five pence piece but you've got one little flyer just went low then again could be simply because we didn't fully lead the rifle in when we did this we only cleaned the barrel but you can see there that's actually not too bad at all with maybe a bit more letting in that would really close up now you know what i said earlier about wasps um don't discount them they group very well in certain guns well not this one um it looks like we're trying to draw a frowny face that one is not even really worth measuring now further on this is the one that people are probably most excited about the qys um, pellets now these not five pence but i have tested it with the 20p and it will fit under them but not the stars of the show i'm afraid slightly further along I can pick the coin up, there we go. Slightly further along, the SMK Victory Shocks. Now these are a surprising pellet at times, and again, it was gusty when we tested this, and I think, if that leads in a little bit more, I think that'd be very surprising. But, again, not the best on test. These were odd. You got the rifle field domes. Now with this, that is four pellets in there which is incredibly impressive. Then we had one low, unfortunately. We also had that, which was, I think, the most wayward shot we'd done on the day. I mean, the main cluster, comfortably, five pence piece. Ignore that on the right. That's not actually a pellet hole. That's actually where the pellet hit our backstop, which is a little too hard, and bounced back. If I just pan it like that, I hope you see it's flapping upwards. Now we get to the real good stuff. Next up, the Webley Acupel. Now, the Acupels, were pretty damn exceptional, it must be said. No flyers, just one funky little shaped hole, easily eaten by a five pence piece. But then, I'm sure you expected this, JSB Ex Exact Express Diablo. Now these are also exceptionally clean. Look at that, straight through the ball. I think we found our winners. We've got the, we're gonna be letting in a bit more and then we're gonna retest with the Acupel and the JSB Exact RS. We're gonna push it out to our 35 yard mark and we're gonna test the pair of them using the mag. However, there's one more I want to add to this test just for a little bit of scientific testing and a bit of fun. The Remington Tyrant Hammer. Now I know what you're thinking, Ugh. but if you take a look at that, look at the cluster you've got just above the bullseye and you've just got two, it's a shame those two little flyers are there because Hang on, it's sort of it's bounced back right on the bullseye. If you have a look there, 
easy under a five pence piece. You never know. If that leads in, it might be every bit as tight, if not tighter than the Webleys and the JSBs. And yes, I realise this is the first, per probably the first person out there that's ever said a budget pellet could group as good as a JSB in an Acupo. And at longer range, you never know, it might shotgun all over the place. You'll have to say it's a good pattern, not a good spread on it. But, like we said, like the shotgun. But let's move on and let's put the target back at our average 35 yard mark. Let's take the Express Exacts, the Acupels, and the Tyrants. We're going to clean it through, clean it through like last time again, and fire a few through it and see just how tight a group we can get at 35 yards. But overall, I'd say it's not a massively pellet fussy barrel, to be fair. Even the budget pellet seemed to do pretty damn well. Anyways, let's move on, let her in, and see what she can really do. And we'll use the mag. So, wind's picking up a little bit, but let's have our first test at the 35 yard mark with the Remington Tyrant Domes. Next up, Webley Acupel. Next up, JSB. So then the winner of our 35 yard accuracy test is blatantly not the Remington Tyrants. Um, I knew I was sort of pushing my luck with this one, um, putting these up there, but I thought, do you know what? They did okay at 25 yards. Let's see how they do at 35. Well, granted, the wind did increase ever so slightly. It's definitely not calmed down, I'll put it that way. Um, because of that, I'm also going to say I've lost the 5p coin because it was sitting on one of the target cards that I didn't pack away. The wind picked up and I think it's somewhere in Chelmsford now. But when it comes to 35 yard accuracy testing, I think we can quite easily say that the tyrants, well, I've still got the 20 pence. <sighs> Eh, it's not even a 20 pence group to be fair not really worth taking but good for planking perhaps now here's the difficult one because both of these were absolutely superb now granted the JSB has that one flyer off to the left it could have been me um, maybe I yanked it I don't know it could have been the wind blowing it off course I have no idea but if we ignore that look at where the other 12 went pretty much straight in one slightly expanded hole. Now the Acupel group isn't so pretty, but you can't deny the fact that it doesn't have that flyer there. And it's still, I mean, I have got 20 pence, which is way too big for this. There you go. If I put it underneath, you can see just how much. I mean, there's no comparison really. The 20, 20 pence pretty much devours the whole thing. What I do have is a stumpy little fat Acupel. So let's just put that in there to sort of give a little bit of perspective. Acupel sits in the center. Obviously it's bigger than the Acupel group, but it's really not much. I reckon if we pushed it right out like that, we might be able to get maybe one more just laying up behind it. Yeah, she's about two Acupels across. Not bad, eh, for a budget uh, PCP. <laughs> Again, 35 yards in windy conditions with an ape like me pulling the trigger. I'd say there's probably 75% of people watching this are better shots than me, and that's because the other 25% haven't left school yet. Moving slightly further along, here's the JSBs. Let's do the same test. There you go, Acupel. Oh, if I can get it in there, it's a little bit difficult looking through the camera screen. So we've got Acupel, and we've got Acupel. And do you know what? I think the JSBs, we got the flyer. I think the JSB is just pip it. So you know what's got to be done now. We go back to our 35 yard mark. We use the single shot tray this time. And we put say, let's do 10 pellets. 10 pellets through it. And let's see just how good the gun can do with that tray. So let's move on to 35 yards single shot tray testing.
Okay then, so 35 yards with the single shot tray, what do we think? It's better. <laughs> it's, it's got a little bit better. Now it's every bit as wide across than when we used the mag, but when it comes to verticality, there definitely seems to be a fair bit less. Now let's do our two pellet trick. And let's take a look. Right, uh, can't feel my fingertips. It is freezing, so I'm sorry about that, but yeah. It's pretty much, it's a dear little bit thinner uh, when it comes to width, but it's a lot thinner when it comes to in the vertical. Now, I'm not gonna complain about those groups if that come from a Virac HW100, let alone an Artemis, this is probably less than half the price depending on where you go. But this won't mean much to hunters because there's no thread adapter on there so you're pretty much, unless you buy an adapter, which you can get with these, the, as we might have said earlier, the tuning potential for the Artemis guns is out of this world. But a hunter might not like this gun if it barks like a dog each time you pull the trigger. There's also one more thing I want to mention. I did find another potential fault with this rifle whilst testing it with the single shot tray. And that, as hopefully you'll be able to see, because that's a good angle. Look at the gaping hole where the, the uh, breech probe sits. Pellet probe, sorry, I'll say it right in a minute. I'm freezing cold, brain's not working correctly. Yeah, that's begging for a pellet to fall back down there if you're using the single shot tray. Now again, if it does happen, simply open the bolt like you can see here, tip the rifle upside down and shake and it should come straight out. But at the same time, I don't like it when rifles do this. I picked on the M30 when it did it and I've, it's only fair that I pick on the M22 as well. Don't like that, should be like the M16. It should be the hole is designed to fit the probe, but is what it is. As long as you're careful with it, I'm sure it'll be fine. And if a pellet does fall through there, it's usually a case of, right, stock off. If you keep firing, it will graunch the action to pretty much a standstill. Stock off, trigger unit off, and you'll usually see the pellet nestled in the trigger unit. Again, you can watch out for this, but if you notice a pellet fall back, it's not the end of the world. Open the bolt, like we said, shake it, pellet should come out. But accuracy testing, I don't think there's going to be any complaints from anyone with these, but as we said, we have to test for sound. So let's get that app on our phone all uh, warmed up. Let's put the phone up to the, uh, the barrel and see how loud she is. Let's see how good these baffles really are. Right then, so sound testing time. Oh, that was 60, what was that? That was 76.2 decibels just with me talking then. Um, as I'm sure you can uh, imagine, this is quite echoey and loud inside this barn. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, yeah, we gotta bear that and give it a, a, a little bit of a pinch of salt when it comes to the readings on here, cause it's gonna be amplified a little bit, but let's give her a little squeeze and see what these baffles can do. So it's settle. Let's see, that jumped up to, if what I'm looking at is correct, around 65 decibels, which is, which is pretty quiet. Now, I'm not going to lie, I can't remember what the Nova Vista Alpha did, but that is pretty damn good. Let's just give it one more go. Let's, let's refresh. Let's reload and then refresh. So we can give it one more proper go. Now, I'm not going to say a word. The gun's cocked, pointing in a safe direction. I'm going to refresh, not say a word, and simply pull the trigger. Let's see. Seventy-one point seven that time, so almost a little bit on the louder side. Now, bear in mind this is without a pellet loaded. With the pellet in there, it's going to be even quieter than this. So it's gone from around sixty-five to seventy-one. So not too bad at all, especially when you consider me talking at the minute it seems to put it up to sixty-two, which it says conversation. So not bad. Like we said, it's inside an echoey barn, so in the, in the open field, it's going to be a hell of a lot quieter than this. So overall, I'd say probably not as quiet as if you had a proper silencer on there perhaps but at the same time not bad at all to be fair you could easily hunt with it um, the other thing I'd say is I wasn't just making that up what I said earlier you can get a silencer adapter for this um, if you looked at the older shape M22 what we had uh, the previous customer had the brilliant idea of he adapted one onto his um, when he traded it in and although I've yet to try one with a silencer that would be a hell of a setup, having it internally baffled and silenced at the same time. If you watch the Zabroya review back, you'll see I was a very big fan of the Hortizia when it came out, because you could, or you had that capability to do it. But overall, sound-wise, not too bad at all. So, let's move on to the final verdict and see what we think of the Artemis M22.
Okay then, so final verdict. What do we think of the Artemis M22? What do we like and what don't we like? Well, as we always like to say, no rifle's perfect. So let's start off with the negatives. Now, one of the main negatives that might put a few people off of this is the sensation of weight. Now, I say sensation of weight simply because when you put the gun on the scales, it's not actually particularly heavy. It's sort of industry average for a full-size PCP at around 7.7 .7 pounds. That's more or less, yeah, standard, really. Um, the only thing is the weight bias is slightly further forwards compared to other PCPs, so you will feel it in your leading hand a bit more than what you will with some of the other guns on the market, or some of the even some of the heavier guns we've tested on this channel. This might feel a little bit heftier simply because of that balance, so that might put a few people off. The other thing we're going to mention is the safety is stupid, but we're not going to go too much into that because we've already mentioned that countless times now. Um, and also, you've got to be careful with the single shot tray because the rather gaping hole where the pellet probe pokes through is large enough to swallow your thumb, let alone a pellet. So be careful when loading it when using the single shot tray because you can get a pellet back there. Um, the trigger is also not a negative um, because it's really not that bad actually, but it's not the best trigger on the market, which has to be said. Now, when it comes to positives on the other hand, I'm very happy to say there's a hell of a lot of them. Um, first things first, when it comes to, again, this is subjective, when it comes to the look of the gun, I really, really like it. Like I said earlier, I think it's a compliment, but I'm not too sure. I've had a customer say to me before, it looks a bit like an S410. An S410 slightly uglier, but steroided up brother, which, I mean, being compared to an Air Arms, it's, it's not bad, is it? Let's be fair. I don't think anyone will have any negatives to say about the way Air Arms rifles look. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually quite a fetching looking gun. When you see it in the flesh, it's really quite nice. It's lovely and chunky when you do shoulder it, if you can get used to that weight. And it's got that feeling that it's never going to let you down. The bolt itself is also fantastic. It's a real chunky lump of lovely polished metal back there. And it's also really silky smooth to operate as well, which is usually what I expected this gun to fall down on. At the M11 when we first tested it, I thought the bolts were going to be really stiff but thankfully they're not it's a budget gun but it's got a smoother bolt than most of the premium gear that i've ever shot um, the other good thing is obviously the shot count and if we pan down over here hopefully it might be a little blurry i'm sorry about that the camera is not so great when it comes to close-up shots but we had 161 i'd say there full power shots before the rig gently bled off and gently bled off it most certainly did if we scroll down to about there you can see it very casually if you can make that out very very casually falls off Again, this type of gun, no buddy bottle on there at all, just a bloody good regulator and a fairly sizable air cylinder, and we're up to 161 full power shots in 177. And the spread of which, we had a max spread, I believe, of 21 FPS before it dropped off. That was because we had one hot shot come through at 11.1. When the gun's run in, when that regulator is seated in, you could see it starting to seat when we were shooting it through. It was sitting, say, 10.7, 10.8, that sort of area. As we said, you can see how it was improving because the standard deviation ended up coming down to, I can't quite remember now, that was a little while ago, but I think it was, was it 3.46, something like that? It really just fell where the gun was just starting to get so consistent. So again, no major flaws there. When it comes to other little bits and bobs, what you get with the gun, I love the fact that you've also got the regulator pressure gauge as well as the air pressure gauge. Now the air pressure gauge is stupidly placed, as a lot of PCP rifles are. Um, it is a bit of a negative, but at the same time, let's be fair, and there goes the wind, what I've been telling you about. <laughs> The, <laughs> I forgot where I was. The, um, yeah, a lot of them have them on the end, on the air cylinder. It's a bit of a negative if we're being honest, but as we said, a lot of them have that. So eh, you gotta cut it a little bit of slack. Um, at the end of the day, you can always see if your gun's running low on power or not, if the regulator pressure gauge starts to drop off or anything like that. So technically you could never have to look down the end if you wanted to, but uh, I'm, I don't know, it's a bit of salesman talk coming out now. It, it's still a silly idea. Um, Accuracy-wise, I mean, we've lost a part of the Acupel uh, grouping. We'll see if we can pick that up maybe in a second. But the thing I was impressed with, and where a lot of budget guns, again, can fall down, is that they can be pellet fussy. Um, I love the Artemis M16, but it is a pellet fussy gun. The M11, an M22, which if anything is cheaper than the um, Artemis M16, was actually far less pellet fussy, which I didn't expect. You've got the Acupels here. This is our 25 yard group with the Acupels, and we do have our five pence piece, we found it. And this, as you can see, you're looking sub five pence. Now that is with the mag at 25 yards. If I can just put that there, there you go, job done. 
On top of that, we also, another one with, which is well worth a mention, is the Superdomes. As we said, this was the group before, the day before, it was really rather gusty and it was blowing around all over the place. This was the group the day after, where the wind was still blowing, but it calmed down a fair bit. And as you can see, again, only 25 yards, but it is completely gone when you put that 5p piece over the top there. When the gun beds itself in, if you used to only use Superdomes, I'm sure it would tighten up just like the best we had on test. And speaking of the best on test, we've got the JSB Exact. Now these shot ridiculously well. Here's 25 yards, that's a full 13 shots through the mag. Then we moved out to 35 yards where we got this with the mag. We had one flyer by the looks of things, but Everything sits under a five pence piece. Now these were shot off of a rest. I think I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, we couldn't use the actual rifle rest. We had to fold up the rifle bag, this padded bag we got here, because as per usual, someone's borrowed our rest. Now moving slightly further on, we've got 10 shots through the single shot tray. And again, it's a similar story. It's just pretty much completely gone underneath that five pence piece. Now granted, each one of these tests we did, we cleaned the barrel. Um, this is the first time we've done this. We put a few uh, sort of wads through there, fired them through just until the wads started coming out clean and then we retested. But saying that, it does mean that these aren't, we put a few bits of lead through it, but it's not fully leaded in as such. There's a big tractor going by. Hopefully the mic, our new uh, lapel mics cut that out a bit. I'm so sorry if it didn't, but yeah. When that leads in even further, it's bloody impressive, I've got to say. Um, we now, you'll see stock Virarc and things like that. We get the HW100s and things, all those sort of gear in. And I would confidently say that wouldn't group any better, especially considering the conditions of what we've been shooting in. Um, it just is, when it comes to performance, a lovely, lovely gun. Um, but I think that pretty much, at the moment, wraps it up. The other advantage with these, being an Artemis product, there are tons and tons and tons of modifications you can get. You can see there was a few little bits and bobs on the older M22 that we had on this channel. We can see sort of the extras and 3D printed bits they make for these and all that sort of gear where you can really transform the gun into pretty much anything. But that wraps it up for this review. I'm so sorry it's taken so long for this to come out and I also apologise for the weather. You can probably hear the barn banging around behind me. I'm going to get out of here before it collapses on top of me.